What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Dasher DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video I'm going over the wild card weekend Saturday two game slate. Uh, both games, you know, uh, around the same total so it's not like one stands out more than the other. Uh, the interesting one is Miami and Kansas City, uh, expected to be one of the coldest games in NFL history. Uh, the Cleveland-Houston game, probably going to be warmer, seeing that it's going to be in Houston. So, you you got to take it. Uh, th this one is really, really tough, um, just looking at the game, right? So, let, let's break it down position by position, go over, you know, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receiver, tight end, defense, and cash. Uh, tournament values. We're we're gonna go all of it with this breakdown. So, <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes, seventy one hundred, uh, going against Miami. Who Xavier Howard just got announced out. Uh, Javon Holland and Elliott, uh, their two safeties, both questionable. Both have not practiced, so I would expect them to more than likely be out. Which means Miami is going to be down three defensive backs against a Kansas City's offense who has struggled at times in a majority of the season to be efficient offensively. And in a very cold game, I, I don't like the speed. Where right? I, I like the more toughness. I like the uh, Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, Justin Watson um, type for Kansas City. So Patrick Mahomes at his price point, I, I think going Mahomes here is very safe. I think uh, normally... <clears throat> going with Kansas City's offense has not been the best, uh, but seeing Mahomes' split at home versus away is significant. Uh, 3 points, 16.8, and the one they played in Germany um, with only 185 passing yards. I think, realistically, being a colder game, we're probably going to get a lot more on the run. So if you wanted to target the Shroud-Flacco aspect, I'm okay with that as well getting away from the cold game like it, it's a huge factor you have to play into when picking your lineup um cleveland houston you know we saw without cj stroud um so we'll look at flacco actually uh without cj stroud you know 58 points uh yet again played at houston so that's with houston having a majority of their defensive starters in that game as well too i believe i think the only key guy out was uh, Stroud, but Joe Flacco's proven against good defenses. He can move the ball, so <clears throat> I'm okay with with getting uh, Joe Flacco at his price point, being the cheapest quarterback, and just rolling with that. I think it's a, a really good play, and you can stack, you know, uh, two of his pass catchers. Right, you could stack Amari Cooper and Njoku and run with that uh, on the Stroud side. Right, we're gonna get Stroud with his pass catchers back. Obviously, Tank Dell will not be there, unfortunately. Uh, but you're going to look at Noah Brown and Robert Woods uh, both being limited, but limited is better than uh, did not participate. So um, I would expect at least one of those two to be in. Nico's going to be in, so you're, you're going to get Stroud with a combination of Nico Woods or Nico Brown or hopefully all three. So Stroud will have some of his weapons back that he didn't have uh, last week against Colts. <clears throat> but you look at Stroud just throughout the season uh and he's been efficient for his pass attempts right you you see his pass attempts only 40 uh a couple times in the season and you see the high passing yards right 336 on 37 356 on 39 uh 470 on the 42 uh 306 on 30 384 47 um like he, he's been efficient with the the pass attempts right the deep ball threat has been what they've done that that's they're able to do it cj stroud has looked very impressive this season uh but if you were to go at a guy <clears throat> it's going to be joe flacco for me right um just what he's done against these defenses right the jets defense elite defense and we thought this would be the the defense that could stop joe flacco he still throws for 300 yards and three touchdowns and that's with losing elijah moore halfway through the game too houston's defense who they're playing same thing on the road granted it's in a different environment right it's a playoff game this was a playoff game, essentially, right? But CJ Stroud wasn't there. That's a huge factor you have to play in. So, Joe Flacco, yes. Stroud, yes. I think the only quarterback I'm not really going for is Tua, right? We haven't seen Miami's offense be good against good de teams, good defenses. Mahomes, I, I do like Mahomes, right? I, I, I think he's a safe play. 
regardless of the game environment, right? He's only had one game under 10 points this season. Now, granted, they've been disappointing. You look at the 20 point games and since like week eight, two games. So yes, if you want to target the Flacco Stroud, I I 100% support it. I do think Mahone's first price point is good though, um, even in the cold environment. So running backs, it, it's um, running backs are difficult in, in my opinion. I think going <clears throat> Pacheco in cash is is probably a safer bet, right? Miami's defensive line, their linebackers are banged up, their safeties are banged up. It's a cold game. Isaiah Pacheco runs very tough. <laughs> we all know. I, I don't need to go in depth. He runs very tough. And with the injuries on Miami's defensive line, they've been good against the run all, all season. Miami's been very, very good against the run. Uh, but Isaiah Pacheco, this is probably a game where you see Isaiah Pacheco um, get a lot of rushing attempts, going to run hard, um, and for his price point, yes. Like, you're going to have to pay up a tight end this week, one way or another. You have you have to pay up. So getting Isaiah Pacheco at his price point, I think, is very good, right? The quarterbacks are cheap, too. You're not overly paying for a quarterback this week. 7100 for the most expensive quarterback is very cheap. So going off of that... Devin Singletary is another guy we know is going to get volume against Cleveland. You saw what he did week 16, only 9.3. I think now with the Miami-Kansas City news, right, with how cold it's going to be, targeting the Houston-Cleveland game is is looking a lot better. Um, but uh, Devin Singletary at 5,700 is, is playable. Mostert expected to be back. Um so it'll be A-Chain and Mostert. We know Mostert is the goal line back this season. He's the goal line back, right? Just best goal line back in, in the NFL, uh, getting those touchdowns. So you look at his, his games played, he's on a big touchdown streak in multiple games with two or more touchdowns. So um, Mostert has that upside. I, I think A-Chain is going to be the guy that really – can make the Miami offense a little more explosive than Mostert can, uh, but Mostert going to be the, you know, they get in the red zone, he's going to be their guy. He's still going to get carries too. Uh, they're probably going to split carries, so I would lean Mostert just for that fact. Um, Pacheco at his price point. Singletary I think is fine. If you wanted to go with Cleveland back, I'm saying Jerome Ford is probably the option. You see week 16, 9.3, and you look at Kareem Hunt, and that same thing, uh, 9.6. So does outscore him, but because of that touchdown. That's where all of Kareem Hunt's points pretty much come is in the red zone. That's his role as well as a red zone back. Uh, so I, I like Ford at his price point. Uh, and that's pretty much it, right? Like, I think any running back is pretty much playable this week. Ford, Singletary, Pacheco, both Miami running backs. But realistically, I'm targeting Pacheco, and I'm probably, you know, depending on where my salary ends up, looking at Singletary or Jerome Ford. Those are my my two that I'm going to have to make a choice on. Probably going to leave Miami running backs alone. We'll see what it looks like, though. But I'm probably in cash leaving those Miami running backs alone. Tournament, tournament I, I think either one is playable, right? For their price point, they're probably going to get lower ownership than the cheaper guys on this slate. But it's a very cheap slate, right? Like Tyree Kill going to wide receivers is the most expensive at 8700 So going back and looking at Tyreek's prices, right? We saw 8200 week seven against Philly. And I feel like that was a primetime game. And maybe maybe that's why his price is different here. But, I mean, his price point has been above 9 k all season. So you're getting a discount um, against Kansas City. Let me go and look at week nine, 13.5. That's J with Jalen Waddle in too. So Tyreek Hill. <clears throat> I don't love Tyreek Hill this week. I, I think I like him, right? I but I don't love him. I don't need him in my cash lineup. If you can build a lineup that affords Tyreek Hill, then go for it. But I don't think he's a need. I, I think he's got the highest ceiling on this slate by far uh, for wide receivers. But as far as needing him in cash just because he's so expensive i don't think you need it right nico collins facing cleveland you saw what nico collins did against cleveland uh four for 18 and a touchdown right that touchdown kind of saves him but that's yet again without cj stroud you see cj stroud uh against indy 37 and a half nine catches on nine targets for 195 and a touchdown so 
Nico Collins, for the amount of injuries Cleveland has on both sides too, I, I like Nico Collins, right? I, I'm okay with Nico Collins being that top guy that I'm paying for on this slate. I think he's in a great spot. Getting Noah Brown and Robert Woods back, or like I said, at least one of them. One of them could be out, but getting one of those two back help Nico Collins out quite a bit. Uh, it relieves some of that, you know, just going, hey, we shut down Nico Collins. You know, let John Mechie, let, let uh, Hutchinson, let Schultz beat, beat us. We, we see Noah Brown have some good games with C.J. Stroud, right? Eight for 82 and a touchdown. Uh, eight or seven for 172. Six for 153. And you even go to Robert Woods, right? Robert Woods has had some good games. Even uh, week 17, four for 58. Uh, earlier in the season, six for 74, six for 57. Like, it's not saying that, you know, these guys are special or anything, but having them in helps someone like Nico Collins out, right? Having Tank Dell in would be amazing, but unfortunately we don't get that. Um, but I think having that Houston wide receivers get healthy is, is a huge plus. Amari Cooper... Uh, 6,800 against Houston. Saw Amari Cooper have one of the best fantasy games in in fantasy history against Houston when they played 11 for 265 and two touchdowns. So um, only $400 more expensive than what he once was. Uh, I think, yeah, he's in a great spot. Uh, if you can't afford it, I think Elijah Moore, who cleared concussion protocol uh, and is good to go, is in a pretty good matchup himself. Uh, you see his game against Houston, just two for 19. But he has that upside we've seen with Flacco. Um, and I, I don't think it's terrible for paying 4000 If you wanted to pay up for, you know, uh, a Tyree kill and you need a cheap wide receiver, like I said, you're paying up a tight end this week one way or another. She Rice. I love Rasheed Rice. I think he's probably the best wide receiver matchup out of uh, all wide receivers on this slate. His price point is good at 6600 uh, being the most consistent pass catcher on Kansas City. You can see the 10-plus fantasy points he gets. Uh, even last week of getting a small amount of targets, uh, six targets, makes it worth his while uh, with a 67-yard catch that you know was amazing. Um, but five for 127 gets you 20 DK points. Uh, you see against Miami in Week 9 in Germany, 9.7. But that's when he wasn't getting a lot of snaps compared to where he is now. Um, so at his price point, 6,600, Rasheed Rice is probably the guy I'm going for. Jalen Waddell uh, against Kansas City. I, if you're going to go a pass catcher, go with Tyreek Hill. Um, I'm not taking the risk on Waddell and his consistent injury that he's having um, on his left leg, I believe it is. Um, I, I f believe it is the left leg he's had problems with all season. I could be wrong and it could be re the right one. But he's had consistent problems on one leg all season. Uh, I would just lean Tyreek Hill if you're going to play a Miami pass catcher. Noah Brown, like I mentioned, Noah Brown, Nico Collins, Robert Woods, I think they're all in good spots. Uh, if they're all healthy, I think you could play any one of them. Obviously, Noah Brown is a good mid-tier price guy to get to. He's pretty much the only mid-tier price guy at 5100 on this slate. Elijah Moore is 1100 cheaper. Jalen Waddle is 1400 more expensive. So Noah Brown's in that really good spot. Uh, Cedric Wilson here at 3800 you know, <clears throat> last week had a touchdown callback on him. Um, not a huge upside target guy, but I mean, for his price point at 3,800, getting five, three, four, four, three for targets isn't terrible on a slate like this. Uh, Tillman obviously gets ruled out for Cleveland, so you're looking at uh, you're looking at Bell, you're looking at Goodwin probably being in that role. Um, I don't really think there's value on either one. Um, David Bell, four for 68. So you could go off recent bi uh, bias uh, in the two touchdowns. Other than that, hasn't really done much this season uh, against the Jaguars, gets a 41-yard touchdown. But, I mean, you're looking for that boomer bust, and I guess on this slate you could say that. Um, I just don't think it's really worth getting to, maybe, like, the recency. But you also have to factor in, um, <clears throat> again, since he pretty much all that came in the, the fourth quarter. And that's without Joe Flacco. That's... Um, that's Driscoll as the quarterback, I think is who they had. Yeah. Driscoll as a quarterback, not Joe Flacco. So I'm not looking at that. Justin Watson. I mean, I don't think any Kansas city other than, uh, Rishi Rice is I'm looking at this week, honestly in tournaments. Yeah. You could go anybody like 
it you can make a case for anybody in tournaments for dfs right but i don't think there's anyone outside rasheed rice worth taking mvs is just not what he he was uh last season for kansas city i personally just never liked uh mvs um and is he at the stone min like yeah mvs down here at 3k um I don't know why he's at 3K and the others aren't. But you get Justin Watson here at 3,400. Richie James at 3,300. Kadarius Tony at 3,200. Miko Harmon at 3,100. Like, if I'm going anybody else on Kansas City, I'm going Miko Harmon. And you could go, yes, like last week, 11 targets, 6 for 77. Wasn't Patrick Mahomes. But Miko Harmon is used to this system. Miko Harmon was on the playoff teams. He has that chemistry with Patrick Mahomes already. If I'm getting anybody other than Rasheed Rice, uh, it's Miko Harmon. At his price point, 3100 I think he's a great tournament value play at 3100 uh, Other than that, the only other guy that I kind of see that I, I have any interest in, and it's a small amount of interest, is John Mechie here um, at 3200 And that's if Robert Woods and Noah Brown are both out. Still, it's not anything special, right? He hasn't done anything at all this season. Um for Houston, it's pretty much been Tank Dell, Nico, Robert Woods, Noah Brown, even Hutchinson's got targets. Uh, but John Mechie, I think, is if one of those wide receivers are out, worth a, a look in tournaments. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Tight ends, like I said, you're paying up for tight end, right? There, there's four tight ends on this this slate that have actual value. You know, getting the majority of the snaps. Drew Smythe is the cheapest at 3K, or Durham Smythe. I don't know why I said Drew. Uh, Durham Smythe at 3K. You look at what he's done. He's gotten, you know, like three, four targets quite a bit this season. And especially as of late with Jalen Waddle being out, Moster being out, HM being out uh, from time to time. Like he's there in targets. But against this Kansas City team that plays tight ends fairly well, I don't like it. I, I don't like it at all. If you want to go Dalton Schultz against Cleveland, uh, who week 16, 14.1, which is one of the better games Cleveland's allowed at the tight end position. Um, I, I just don't I don't like playing tight ends against Cleveland. I, I think Ninjoku against Houston, right, and Kelsey against Miami are the plays to go to. I mentioned Miami is down so many linemen, so many linebackers, a starting corner, possibly two starting safeties. I like Travis Kelsey, especially for his price point at 6,100. He has not had a good season um, Mahomes and Kelsey have just not had that connection. I think Matt Nagy is a terrible play caller and doesn't know how to get the most out of his weapons. Uh, and, and I just hate him as a play caller. And I hope Andy Reid takes over the play calling. I really do. I really hope it's Andy Reid because we could get Travis Kelsey to have a great game. Uh, but four targets, three for 14 against Miami in their Germany game. And that's pretty much the game that started it. That, that was the game, if you look, it started Travis Kelsey's downfall, right? Still gets 16.4, 15.1, 12.1, 14.3. But that game, uh, you look at the rest, uh, rest of the season, 6 for 58, right, 11.8, that's a down week. But, I mean, you look at it, it just the targets. Like, Travis Kelsey should get 10-plus targets a game. I, I, with how bad Kansas City's wide receivers are, 10-plus targets a game. I don't care. I'm getting Kelsey targets. I, it just amazes me. But, yeah, you're going Kelsey or Ninjoku on this late, in my opinion, right? If you're getting, if you're looking for a contrarian play and going, hey, these guys are getting low ownership, then yeah, Smythe and Schultz definitely. Like, if you want to get different and go, the ownership's going to be on the Joku, the ownership's going to be on Kelsey. And yeah, going there. And then last but not least, the defenses. Uh, I'm looking at the Chiefs, or for that matter, the Browns, Texans. Right, they're all in a fair price point. 3,300 the most expensive defense isn't going to kill you. Uh, the matchup against the Texans, right, yet again, without Stroud, only 7 DK points. Uh, you look at the Texans against Cleveland. This one's interesting, right? Uh, 7 points for them. They get that defensive touchdown, only one sack, uh, 2 interceptions. Joe Flacco is a turnover machine, but he also pushes the pace of the game quite a bit. Uh, but the Chiefs defense, I think, is a defense I'm going to roll with. You look at their game against Miami, 12 points. You look at their their home split versus their away, 1.5 point difference. Uh, the passing yards, 150 compared to 206. Um, the, the the turnovers, right? I'm just going to target Miami or Kansas City's defense in a very cold game at home. 
uh, in this one. So if you guys want an example lineup, I will I will do these lineups. I'm going to give one just off the top of my head. See what we can come up with and go from there. So I'm going to go... Um, Let's go for the sake of this video. Let's go Joe Flacco. I mentioned we like Isaiah Pacheco, so let's go Pacheco. We're going to get the defense out of the way and get the Chiefs in. Uh, I like doing that. It's pretty much just gives me what I want. I'm going to go player by player of guys that I want in my lineup, right? Well, let's go Rasheed Rice. It's 6,600. Uh, tight end. I think if we're getting a tight end, we're going to get Njoku. If we're doing a Flacco stack, I think we're getting Njoku. Um now let's go and see what else we have i think we go off of this lineup i think we go singletary on houston side wide receivers i, I think it's safe to say we go amari cooper and can we get nico what does that look like 2900 we really can't do anything with that with nico so let's go Noah Brown instead and see what that gives us. That gives us 4,800 at the flex. Um, and there's not really anybody, right? I, mm, Kelsey's up there. So there's not a lot, right? We're, we're fading Tyreek. We're fading Nico. Uh, there, there's a lot we're fading here on this one. Um, so... Let's go off Noah Brown. Let's just, for the sake of the video, say Robert Woods. 61 allows us to get Kelsey, so a double tight end sack. I don't love it, but, I mean, we, we get Flacco in this one. We get Pacheco that I really like. We get Rasheed Rice that I really like. And we get Omari Cooper. The Both the tight ends, so you get all of that ownership there in the Chiefs defense. So, like I said, you're, you're fading Tyreek, Nico, uh, both Miami running backs, uh, Jalen Waddell. But other than that, I, I, I really like that lineup. Besides getting Robert Woods as Houston's number one pass catcher, apparently. Um, so, yeah. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I will have the video going out for Sunday's game um, slate out tomorrow. So, if you guys are interested, check that one out. And I will see you guys then.